I see the point of doing what we're doing. We're trying to get the CO2 emissions down so the planet doesn't overheat. I, I get it. But just the way the government have gone about it, it's just it's just a mess. They haven't thought about how well houses are insulated. Why wasn't this done years ago? Then your heat pumps would work. It just There's no joined up thinking. Why don't they just make a 30 year plan and stick to it? It just doesn't make any sense. The customers are very confused. I keep getting phone calls. Are we staying with kerosene? Are we going over to something called HVO? So they're all panicking about having a new oil boiler. They think, have I got to have one tomorrow or within the next year? And the people who make the boilers are also panicking because they think, have we got to make lots and lots of boilers? We're not allowed to make any more. The government really need to make a decision one way or the other what they're going to do. Because if we go over to heat pumps, fine, but then you're going to have to insulate the houses a lot, lot more than what you have so far. What's happening is a lot of misinformation out there, an awful lot in the gas and the oil industry. The Telegraph putting out that 2026, we can't fit any more oil boilers, but it's not gone through Parliament. It's, it's not correct. It's still got to go through Parliament to get the answer to whether we are or aren't about to fit them after 2026. So, if you can't fit them in a new build, I think that's probably going to happen because you can build a new build, the insulation will be correct and it'll work, but it will not work in your old thatched cottage with a leaky wall with no insulation it just won't work. It's just not going to happen. We've took some heat pumps out already. Admittedly, they're incorrectly fitted, but the houses were not insulated properly. The radiators are supposed to be upsized, and you're supposed to do a load of heat calculations. None of this was done. So therefore, they sat there cold, and there's one customer who lived in the four-bedroom detached house. His electric bill last year, over the winter period, was £4,000, which is ridiculous. And we had to put an oil boiler back in what she had previously. In the modern property, Built after 2006 or an older property that's been insulated probably. A heat pump is brilliant. They work really, really well. I'm not knocking them at all. They're really good. But they've got to be in the right situation. And that is the problem. We've got too many companies out there which come and fit you a heat pump. And then they go bust. Surprise, surprise. We've seen it with solar panels. We've seen it with all sorts of different things. And this makes me really angry. Because you're £5,000 that the government are giving you to do this. Then it gets ripped out. What a waste of money. The government don't seem to know what they're doing. So what we've got to do um, is find out what's really going on here. I spoke to Ofttech about the oil situation recently, and they said there's a bill going through Parliament, which will hopefully answer this, but we don't know at the minute. It's not banned in 2026 at the moment. That is all up in the air, and we don't really know what's going to happen there. We think oil might go down the HVO route. It might not. But then, can we grow enough HVO? It's vegetable oil with a little bit of animal fat in it, not a lot. It lowers the CO2 emissions by around about 80 to 90 percent. Gas is, an, is another situation. Gas, they have said at the moment, you can fit a new gas boiler till 2036 at the moment in your existing property, which is fine. And most of the new gas boilers that are going, I think as of next year, I think I'm right in saying this, they will be all be hydrogen ready. So if we do go, if the grid does go to full hydrogen sometime in the 2040s, the old boilers are able to run on it. But what they're also talking about with the natural gas is we'll put 20% hydrogen into the mix from the late 20, 28, 29, 30. But that's what they're talking about in a minute. And your boiler that you've got now today will run on that. That'll be okay. But also we go to full hydrogen, you're going to have to have a hydrogen ready boiler but they're going to start fitting them and that's not coming anytime soon. That's way off in the future. You can get hydrogen out of natural gas, but if you're going to do that, there's no point because you're still going to have high CO2 emissions. You've got to get green hydrogen, which is electricity through water based. And then when you burn that, there's no harm to the environment. That's all fine. But where are we going to get electricity from to make all this green hydrogen? We haven't got any. You've got to put thousands of wind farms up, wave power, whatever, have solar panels, whatever you're going to use to make it. You've got plenty of time in your gas. You've got till 2036 in your existing home at the moment. But who knows? That might change as well. Like we said with oil earlier. Was it 2026 with oil? Maybe. Maybe not. Doesn't look like it. 2036 with gas. That may go further. What looks like it's going to happen is oil will gradually go to HVO. But if you fit HVO, there's a lot of things you've got to do to your boiler. Don't just put it in your oil tank. First thing you do is clean your oil tank out. You leave residue in there. There may be some water and some bacteria and that will grow in your HVO and cause you a bright load of hassle. Then the next problem is, is your oil filters. This is an oil filter. Inside the oil filter is one of these, and there's a rubber seal like that. These rubber seals are not HVO compliant, and what will happen is that will that'll go all brittle, and the oil will leak out the filter around the side here, and you'll have an oil leak. So you have to update them. Fire valves, this is a fire valve. Some of the ones you've got may be compliant, but they should 
they should say biofuel on them like that one does is what you need you need to change that as well oil pumps which are on your burner these things there's some different versions of these but that has to also be ready to run on hvo most of them got like a green bit in there and you can see that uh, and your flexible oil pipe which goes from the burner to the the solid oil line they also have to be ready for hvo if you use the other ones they'll go brittle inside and next thing you'll know you've got oil all leaking out of there they're the things you've got to do and it's probably worth also cleaning your oil line out because if you don't you're just going to have a mixture of both and that's going to cause you hassle and the other thing if you, you've got to convert the burner itself you have to also change the nozzle if you don't change the nozzle and leave the boiler running as it was on kerosene it'll be 20 percent inefficient which is a bit weird i know so if you have to put the right nozzle in the right pump you have to then reset the pump pressure set it all up with your analyzer change all these things then it should be a lot more efficient and the CO2 emissions will be 80 percent less the cost of what the industry seems to be saying somewhere between four and five hundred pounds the changes over from um, kerosene to hvo obviously once we've done a few we can put it on our newsletter and put it out there what, what it's going to cost to do hvo at the moment is expensive because it's got at the moment hvo has still got the tax on it which which you'd have on on a road car what's got to happen is i think the government are looking into this at the moment we've got to take the tax that you pay on diesel basically which runs in your car and have that took off so it's the same as kerosene i think kerosene is five percent and that's what they're trying to do so if that gets took off then i think it'll only be about 10 percent dearer than kerosene that's what they're saying so if you fit in an oil boiler today a lifespan of an oil boiler is 25 years so i see kerosene being around for 25 years yes it might go to hvo if it does that boiler can be converted to hvo but I think kerosene will be around for a while because petrol and diesel cars are going to be around for a while. So that all, all it's all the same stuff. So I imagine that will carry on. The 2026 deadline at the moment, I would just sit tight in the moment and see what happens. I cannot see them banning oil boilers at the moment. I think they're going to end up like gas in your existing property. They're going to push it into the long grass, probably 2036 or something. I cannot see them banning them. because you, One, you can't make enough boilers quick enough. There's not enough manufacturing out there. Everyone's going to want a new boiler because that's what's going to happen, isn't it? So I cannot see that happening in all honesty, but you never know with a government. Well, they've got an election coming up, so I'm pretty sure it won't happen because if they do, they're not going to get in power, are they? It's obvious. I think the price of the heat pump will come down. The more as they get into it, I don't do it in a minute. I don't envision to do it. And the more it start to go in, the more they become ready available, I think the price will drop. It's got to. It's a bit like the solar panel thing. When they first came out, they were very, very expensive. If you fit them today, they're probably half the price they were back then. And I think heat pumps will go the same way. We can only tell you what we know today. It could change tomorrow.